It's my pleasure today to introduce with me Christopher Kennedy from Henderson, Nevada, and me as the assistant from Newark, Ohio. Christopher, with my assistance, will be giving a presentation on our how-to day of how to play online board games using Tabletop Simulator. Chris has gone to a great deal of work to try to get there. His internet has gone out. Uh, it's supposed to be back, seems to be back, but it's not quite working. So he's joining us on phone for right now until the internet seems to work. Christopher Kennedy is the founder of CK421 Productions, a company that specializes in music and sound design, creating audio for films, videos, and animated content. Christopher is a composer and arranger who has written the soundtrack for two made-for-TV movies, several movie trailers, and is finishing up the soundtrack for his first full-length feature film. Along with this, he is helping develop a new degree program in film scoring for the Nevada State College in the Las Vegas area. He's married to an elementary music teacher and often helps her prepare lessons with his musical arrangements. As you can see, Christopher is very busy, but he's learned that all work and no play, yeah, we all know the rest of that. He took time out of his busy schedule along with his wife and met up with friends to relax, play board games at different friends' homes. That was until COVID and, uh, and, the, and the requirements of keeping distance and all of that stuff made it so you couldn't go to somebody's house and play games. He found there was a way to play board games online and still have fun of playing, but following safe practices. With this new technology or knowledge, Christopher resumed his fun activity and with his friends and then has expanded his online game playing with his parents who live 2,000 miles away. So this afternoon, we are going to, different than we practiced, share with you how to get started using Tabletop Simulator and use a lot of its features while playing a variety of tabletop games, including cards, standard board games, and cooperative games. The first thing you have to do is get a program called Steam that will uh, reside on your computer that allows this all to interact together. To get Steam, you would go to their website, which is store.steampower.com. If you just uh, um, Google or DuckDuckGo Steam, you should end up at this page. And what you'll find out that Steam is a whole system of games that you play on the computer and then some of these games are ones that you can play with with others some of your four and i'm not going to go all through these because that would take forever but up at the top you have an install steam button when you click on that it'll bring you to here steam knows what kind of a computer you are running so it automatically is going to install the windows version but you can also see at the bottom that there's an Apple version. And then this is the version for Linux distributions that are based on Debian. So that would be all, you know, the Debian, the Ubuntu's, the Linux Mint, and everything that's based that way. They are developing uh, other uh, programs that work on the other ones as, as they go. But this is the base program that you get that, Kind of is like the operating system and chris can chime in anytime i don't say anything right yeah it's it's kind of like an app store yeah okay so uh i already have so you know you download that and then you know it just it the steam will be inside the um uh your your programs menu on you know wherever and so then i'll switch back you end up getting to your uh program jumps up so first thing then I have to do is get myself logged into my Steam account. The Steam account is free, as was Steam getting it. So I'm just going to log in.
And you can also set it for remembering if you don't want to have to do it, if you're not worried about somebody getting on your computer and playing all your Steam games. Now, inside of, of Steam, so that you know, oh, lots of advertising, lots of things on here, um, is that you can, through your settings, uh, put, put a, uh, uh, an avatar uh, for you. Uh, you can see that their lines up there in the little corner. It's my little teacher guy. Uh, that's for Steam. But when we go into playing our games, that becomes my marker for, uh, for the game playing that we do. Now, Steam then needs to have some games that you play. And you can go to the store of Steam, which was very similar to what we just saw on the website. And here's where you can go through and find games that you can play on your computer. And again, it's, it's Mac, Apple, and, and uh, Linux. We're today talking about Tabletop Simulator, which is another program that uh, runs inside of Steam that allows you to do all these things that Chris is going to help uh, show you that's amazing um, for, for what we do. And you would go to the library and where'd my search box go? You would go to the store initially. Oh, I'm sorry, store. Oh, there's search. And you would want to search for a table. T-A-B-L-E-T-O-P. And then it pops up. Now, these are games that are within Tabletop Simulator. But what I want you to notice right here, and um, in our first uh, presentation today, Kelly has sent us a handout for his book that he's going to, that Judy will send on to you when we send the information. Uh, we have a door prize, I guess you could say, for you. Tabletop Simulator is a cost game, but what I want you to think of it is, is that it's the big, very fancy gaming table that you go to your sports store and you buy for your house. It might be one of those like, uh, uh, eight-sided ones that's, that's got uh, felt on it and, and cup holders and all that. But, you know, you're buying a big, fancy game table uh, for, your, for your home. This is for the computer. But what I want you to know, it says I already have it, so I can't do it, is that this weekend for, I guess, Valentine's, it's on sale. And I can't believe the price that they put it on. You know, it's half price. It's not even $10. And this is fantastic. So this is the kind of thing where if, if you're thinking about, you might be getting into this online game playing. And as you'll see later, uh, I know that one of my club members is supposed to be here watching because she wants to be able to play with her grandkids and family that are all scattered out. And so um, this would be the great time. If you're even thinking about it, 10 bucks and you have it compared to 20 bucks normally. Uh, you can buy a four-pack family for 30 bucks, so that's even a, a, a discount there. So you would just click on this, and then it would, after you paid for it, it would install it onto your Steam. So if I go back to my library, you can see that on the left-hand side here, I have two programs that I've put on here, and uh, there's the table stop, tabletop simulator. So once I do that, I want to get into it, and it does, you know, it comes in a couple different spots. It can tell you I've been recently playing with it, and there it is. So I just click on it, and it's going to bring up the information, and then I'm going to click play to st start up Tabletop Simulator. Now, we won't be in Tabletop Simulator just yet. It's loading the game right now for us. And this is our, our, our beginning uh, screen. And this is where we found out about it, the Lunar New Year sale for 50% off. So uh, if, if I was even thinking about this, I would go and get it for that much, that much of a price cut and for what this, what this can do. 
There are settings that I wanted just to point out that under sound, there is music that comes from the game. So if you want to have some music while you're playing, there's a volume here. Uh, it sometimes to me gets in the way. So that's something that I uh, turn all the way down so it doesn't uh, drive me crazy. Very similar to uh, Skype and Zoom, this has a voice connection. So you can be able to talk to your component, you know, your uh, fellow players uh, through this. Now, we can't demonstrate that because it would go crazy, the fact that we're using the microphone and, and chatting with um, Zoom. But this way, you can all get online and be far apart and still communicate with each other. And same as with Zoom, the push to talk, and you can set that up. Uh, there are other tools that we we'll, might come back to uh, in terms of uh, setting it up later. Uh, one thing is there's a chat box and I've turned it off because it kind of gets in my way. All right, so that's, that's settings that you would come in and set up and do it. You have two options. You can either join a group or you can create a group. So if I would click on join, and if I went and looked for Chris's game room, uh, we're not gonna find it because unfortunately he's not uh, online. But if I erase that, can I? Yeah, so if you wanna switch to my screen, I can show you. Can uh, you? Yeah, setting up a. You're, you're on, huh? Okay, yeah. great. Uh, I'm going to stop my sharing because we're going to do this back and forth because uh, we want you to be able to see as me, the player, then what it looks like uh, and then back to him. But you can see that these are all uh, the 10, 19,000 different rooms of people uh, playing uh, tabletop all over the, around the world. So. I'll cancel this, stop the sharing, and then let Chris. Yes, we should be seeing that now, right? Yeah. Cool. So you got uh, your internet back. Yeah, for now. For now. Okay, uh, welcome, Chris. Uh, thank you. My yeah. pleasure. So when you, there's one person is going to be the host of the game and they're gonna create a small server inside of Tabletop Simulator that other people can access. So if you're gonna be the host of the game, uh, you're gonna to go to the Create tab right here, and you're gonna click that button, and you're gonna create a multiplayer um, server. So now you can see, and you name it whatever you want, set the password to whatever you want. So for this demonstration, I've got a server name of AppCug Demo and the server password is tabletop. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create that server. And now we've loaded up and you can see I'm inside of, uh, of this little server. And at its core, a tabletop simulator is just a 3D environment with physics modeling. So basically I'm just sitting, there's a table, I'm sitting here, you can see my name down at the bottom. If I rotate around using right mouse down, you can see the little avatar that John mentioned a minute ago. So the, I'm sitting here at this table by myself, all by my lonesome, and I need somebody to play with me. So now I'm gonna stop sharing and we're gonna switch back to John's screen so that you can see how then he logs in to join me in this room. All right, so I'm back at that same screen that I showed you before, and I'm not going to create, but I could create my own room. Uh, it, you know, it's not one of those things where you can only be one or the other. I can be both, and so on days I'm uh, playing games with Christopher, I would just join. So I'm going to click join, and I had already started up at the top. As I said, you know, there's 19,000. Um, Wow, that's a lot. So I go up to the top 
and just APCU. And because nobody else has come up with that kind of a name, it pops right up. So I select that one and then I want to connect to his game room. Do the password. So it's going to be tabletop. And the reason, of course, as you can see right now that we're doing this as a demo one is it doesn't hide your password. And so I'm now connecting. And you'll see a little different view. And you see that that uh, there's Christopher already logged in and I can get to choose a color. So I'm going to jump and take my blue. And the table rotates so I'm at the bottom. But if I wrote the ta table, you can see, remember I told you about that little avatar that I had. Uh, if you don't have one, it just comes up with some kind of a generic uh, table, a generic uh, picture. But it's kind of neat because you can have your own little picture sitting at the table. All right, I think that's all I need to show for right now. So you can see that I got in. And up in the corner, you can see who the other players are when you're playing. All right, I'll stop and let Christopher take these back so he can be doing the... Um... Oh, th there was a question, no, um, that that uh, all players need to p have their own. That's why there was that uh, family pack of, of four I uh, items. So that, yes, everybody does it. So you can be able to access this complete program. Cool, yes, so... Uh, and then, but then the but then the individual stuff that you find in here. Uh, once you've paid the nine ninety nine, it's 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 not a subscription, so that's that's for you know you, you own it outright. And then we have this environment. Um, so when when you first uh, open the game, uh, you can click over here in the tab to the to the left on the top. Uh, and that'll be games. And the first group we'll look at is classic. And these are all the ones that are going to come preloaded uh, with Tabletop Simulator. Um, so we can we can start out with just um, a deck of cards. And we can see that we've got our 52, 52 cards here. Uh, I can grab it, pull a card off. Um, if I right click, so when we when we right click, it's just like many programs, you're gonna find a contextual menu that gives you some stuff to do. We've got shuffle. Uh, you can also see above when I hovered over shuffle there, the R comes up, so that's a keystroke. So just R hovering over the deck, pressing R will give you a shuffle to the deck. Um, we've got cut, split, spread, I can spread, off the table. spread the cards out. Yeah, they, they fell off the environment. Um, let me load up another deck of cards. Um, so we can also from here deal. So we've got the deal button down here. Now, if you select in the gray, it's going to deal a card to everybody. If you just select the color of the of where you're sitting, you'll deal there. So you can see if I if I dealt to everybody, it would deal out to all the seats in the table, even though we don't have everybody there. So let me just, we'll just do that a couple more times. So everybody's got a hand of five cards or six, I guess. All right, so now what I want you to observe is this is my seat down here at the bottom of your screen. And you can see, I can see the cards that are in my hand face up. But if you'll notice, if I turn around here, I can't see the cards that are in John's hand. And so that's, you know, the, the, that, you're only seeing the cards in your hand. So the, the game has created a protected area where you can only see what you have. Now, if I bring my mouse all the way down here, I can see a larger version of the cards in my hand. So if I zoomed out from the table a little bit, I'd still be able to see the cards that are in my hand. Nobody else can see those. Um, a couple other keystrokes to be aware of is if you if you hold on Alt over anything, it's going to bring up a larger version of it. And you can mouse wheel in and out to change the size of that. This is really helpful when you have little cards that have text or helping you, you know, the rules of how to play. You want to hold down Alt so that you can read that at a reasonable size and then close it back out. So with this just simple deck of cards, you could play anything... Um, Anything me, you play at cards. Yeah, I mean, pretty much any game you want it. So I'm going to bring up one more uh, 
blank deck of cards and then just show you. So if, if we were just playing, you know, like a game of rummy or something, I would, if I wanted to just deal to, to John and myself, I would just blue, white, blue, white, blue, white. And now we're, we're dealing those cards out just to the seats that we want. Um, yeah, and, so I, and I'm on my and my I'm on two monitors, so I'm on it doing uh, monitoring my screen, my person, and so I just see my deck. I don't see his, except if I look at the uh, Zoom screen, I can see his deck, but that's cheating. And you can also grab a card from the deck. Um, another key key command to remember is F is flip. So F flips that card over. So. At this point, we could both see the card. Now, as soon as I pull it into my hand, you can see a little box highlight up there towards the bottom of the screen, and that's the safe area that's my hand. So now once that card goes into that area, other players at the table won't be able to see that card anymore. And many games will use this sort of safe, protected area for things that you don't want other people to see. So I'm going to go back to the Games tab. Um, we can pull up a couple other... And these are all, like I said, uh, free games, and each of these are categories, right? Uh, I think they're just the just the game itself. Uh -huh. So we can we can pull up uh, a checkerboard here, and uh, when I talk about the physics modeling, that's sort of what separates this for me from, you know, the games that we might remember from Windows, you know, and the Windows Chess where you're just seeing the picture and it moves. This has a real tactile feeling to it. You know, you click and you're picking up the piece that you've got some nice sound that goes along with it so that as you're moving the piece around when you drop it, you know, you can hear a satisfying sound. I don't know if you guys can hear sound. Yeah, well, I heard it go click. Okay, yeah. Um, and so now with this, we can you can really see how we're both interacting in the environment at the same time. So my hand, I'm the white player, so my hand is white. You can see John's hand up there in blue. And we're both uh, we're both able to interact with the three D elements in this scene in real time together. So there's just there's just a, a heightened sense of hey we're participating in this thing together um, as opposed to a game where you know one person makes a move and then you kind of wait for another person to make a move. Um, so you know he can move my piece and I hey don't don't move my piece I can move it back. Um, and there's just, uh, I think there's a heightened sense of connectivity, uh, being able to interact together within the environment. Um, so let's pull up one more, um, let's pull up a deck of cards again, and I'm actually going to highlight the deck of cards and I'm going to delete them from the context menu. So another thing that you can do is, is it comes pre-programmed with some objects that you can use to make you know, to facilitate whatever, whatever it is you're trying to do. So next to the games uh, menu at the top, we've got objects. And first we can look at tables. So we can switch what our table looks like. Right now we're using the round table. We can switch to an octagon, a little bit more like a poker table that you might, uh, might have at your house. We can switch to a larger poker table like we would have here in Las Vegas. Um, or just a nice little hexagon. Then we can also start to pull up uh, individual components. So we've got blocks, just simple red square, blue rectangle, green triangle, blocks that we can just pull out and use. Now I know there are some people who are interested in playing with uh, grandkids on here. A simple game of blocks. And you can see with the physics uh, modeling in the area, stackable. Is that one? You know, so we're, we're able to use all of those um, in ways that we wanted to. You've got a variety of boards to choose from. With the custom board, you can actually lay that out and assign your own picture to it. We've got the cards that we saw. We've got checkers, chess pieces, marbles. We've got dice that we can throw out. Here's your normal six-sided dice. 
And again, we can select those with a marquee selection, left mouse down, drag a selection around, right click for the contextual menu and click roll. We can see that the shortcut is R, the same as, uh, as our shuffle. And so if we right click and we press R repeatedly, and we're rolling our dice. So just pulling out a simple five set of dice, you can play a game of Yahtzee without any other scripting or modifications at all. So I'd encourage you to just kind of play around, see what's in there. You've got uh, pawns of different colors, uh, poker chips, um, coins. You know, there's, there's a lot of little individual components that you can use to kind of create your own... Um, uh, you know, any materials that you would need for whatever you're trying to do. So one of the really neat things about Tabletop is that it's it's a, it's sort of an open source and what we call moddable environment. So people can then take these basic elements and they can modify them to replicate ver The way that works is we're going to go up to our games tab again, and then we're going to click down here to the workshop. So you can see in the workshop, these are all the games, all the mods that I've already downloaded and that we use to play. Um, Uno is a pretty popular game. A lot of people know Uno. Um, and so you can see that this one loads up. So somebody has gone to the trouble of scanning in all of the Uno cards and setting up an environment where this game is already uh, ready to go. And you can see that basically functioning as a normal UNO game. Now, the question sometimes comes up, what's, what's the, is there a copyright violation going on here? And it seems uh, that the general attitude is that these are games that you would not be able to play over the internet with people. And it's just a way to sort of expose their brand Um as you're playing, you know, and, and so if you're playing Uno online with friends, you're more you're more likely to go purchase an Uno deck and play it in person once we get back to that sort of thing. Um, but mo it, it seems like most of the manufacturers are, are, are OK with people experiencing their product and their brand um, through this virtual environment in hopes that they would then, um, uh, you know, purchase the physical model of the game. Because while this is good, it's still not quite as good as being there in a room with other people and having your hands on the physical game pieces and, and all of that. So the way we would browse for a game, let me just go ahead and delete Clue here so that we can go ahead and look for it. We're going to click on Workshop, and then up here you're going to see the Browse button. And that's actually going to take you back into Steam. And here we've got a bar, Search Tabletop Simulator. So I'm just going to search for Clue. And you've got a rating system here. So you can see multiple people have made uh, various versions um, of the game and with different, different game boards, uh, different takes on the game. Um, I'm going to pick this first one here, and I'm going to click. There's a little plus button down in the bottom. And now you can see that I'm subscribed to this game. Now, this what, what that means by subscribed is that if the, the person who originally made the modification to the game makes different adjustments to it, maybe they go back in and fix some of the cards or they um, redo some of the um, some of the artwork, those changes will will update in your version of the game as well. So then once I've selected my game, I can go back up here to the top. You can see click here to return to the game. And now Clue shows up in my workshop games and I can click on it and load. And now we've got our Clue game board. Everything's set up, ready to go. Here's our murder weapons. Here's our game board. The pawns are already in their starting position. And we've got our rooms, weapons, and suspect cards over here ready to go. Go ahead and now. Uh, yeah, zoom in so that it can okay. See. Yeah, so you can see weapons over here on the right hand side. We've got our dice ready to go. Uh, you can see our pawns are set up in the right spot, and then we've got our three decks of cards over here ready to be shuffled and begin the game. 
And then you can also see with this um, with with this layout, we've got these protected boxes again. So with a game like Clue, you've got your, your little sheet down here where you're making notes and trying to figure stuff out. So what happens with inside these little boxes is not visible to other players. And so you're, uh, uh, you know, you we're replicating the, the way the game would be played as closely as possible through this 3D environment. And again, you can see uh, John's hand floating around. Uh, that does get kind of crazy sometimes is if you've got six or eight people sitting around one table and all of these hands are flying around. I more than once had to been like, hey, could you move your could you move your hand uh, so that I can see see my card there? Um, another thing to note is as you're moving, you can kind of see there's a there's a shadow or a or a translucent version of the pawn that kind of stays on the board and shows you where the pawn is going to drop. Uh, so just some little things like that to make uh, to make moving around a bit easier. Um, why don't you talk about the uh, modification you can do to your your view? Okay. The one about the we just so just just a, a left click is is usually used for selecting items to pick them up or a left mouse down uh, enables you to draw your marquee box and make a group of selections. So you can see a yellow outline around both of those pawns, the green and the white pawn. And so now if I click on those, they'll move together. Uh, middle mouse down slides the view left and right, front and back around, basically keeping your position the same and moving the table around. And then a right mouse down orbits around the center of the table. Uh, and this is one of those things. After the first fifteen minutes of working with it, you, you kind of get you kind of get used to moving the uh, moving the board to to wherever you want to see it. Because uh, you you might start out the game. So uh, John's the blue character, so he's going to start out the game maybe looking at it from this way, and then he's able to just rotate around. Uh, scroll in with the mouse wheel to zoom in and get it to the positioning of whatever he'd like. Uh, let me just call up another game here. Um, my mother's favorite game is Sorry, so we play a lot of Sorry. Uh, and this pulls out. Oh, we can. Somebody's joined us at the table. Um, and so now uh, you can see we've got a third player. I don't see. Uh, John, you may have to select a different color to get a seat at this one. Okay. I don't see you sitting at the table. Can't be blue, huh? Change color. Interesting. And for those people that uh, just clicking on your oh. name up here in the upper right gives you the option to change your color. And. and uh, and the reason for that was that Sorry is a game for only four. Right. And so the color blue is not one of the default colors for a four person. Right. So now you can see we've got three people sitting at the table and we've got now a purple hand in into the mix as well. And again, we're all able to interact with all the pieces, moving them around as we'd like. Um, one thing that gets a bit tricky when you first start is is grabbing cards off the deck. So it's a it's a, a click and swipe drags one card off the deck. If you left mouse down and hold it for a second, you can see the whole deck pick up. And now you can move the whole deck around. And 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 we every time we play, somebody will inadvertently try to try to grab a card off the deck and they'll end up picking up the whole thing and taking it over to their um, to their side and you just set it back. Um, and again, when you draw the card and you bring it to yourself, you do an F to flip it over. Mm -hmm. And here would be a case where with the writing on it, you'd want to be able to uh, do the uh, alt key and uh, make it bigger. Right. right. Alt key. So um, dad, why don't you try to, to take a card that we can see here so we can all see this 10 uh, from my view and I'll pull it into your hand. 
And you can see once it goes into his hand, that protected area, the card flips over. We can't see what it is anymore. Um, just to re just to reemphasize how you've got that that sort of safe space where you've got your hand, nobody else can see it. Um, Ooh, that was a good card. Yeah. Uh, so that's another uh, another fun mod there, um, and you can really kind of search and see what what kind of stuff is is available to you. Um, let me show you one more. Um, interesting thing, particularly those of you who have um, grandkids. Uh, jigsaw is a fun modification. So here, this is a custom jigsaw puzzle. Um, I'm going to, it, it loads up this way, and it's waiting for you to choose a picture. So it might be really fun to do a picture of the family. I'm going to pull up a picture here from my, um, from my hard drive. I'm a musician, so I'm going to select that. Now it's going to ask me if I want to keep it on my local disk or the cloud disk. You're going to need to put it on the cloud so that everybody, it's going to upload the image to your server cloud so that everybody in the game can access it. Because you found out if not, all my pieces are white jigsaw pieces. <laughs> Makes it difficult to play that game. That's a little different too. Yeah. Is it still rendering? No, it just seems to have not come up. So let me try that again. Oh, I wonder if it can't use a PNG. I just thought it was a dark picture at night. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, those are all PNGs. Yeah, uh, and I'll point out on the, in terms of the games, too, Everything that Christopher has shown us and we play is free. There are paid games. We ha There are people who are developers that pay games, but they are very similar to the costs of apps for your phone and stuff, you know, three, four, five dollars. Um, but you don't have to pay anything. Once you get past the tabletop, you can be playing games for nothing. So for forgive the choice of JPEG, this is a screenshot from a webinar on music from Star Trek TV series I did a while ago. Uh, but you can see it's taken, so it's showing you the image that that the game sh that the that the picture originally is, and you can see that all of the pieces have been broken up now. And so now we have a custom puzzle from uh, from a photo of your choice. And once again, we're all able to interact and move these pieces around. Uh, another important shortcut, Q and E will rotate the pieces. And, you know, this is a good one. Uh, there were different sizes, so you could do a smaller, a smaller sizes of pieces um, if you had, you know, if you had younger children working with you. Um, but this is another good way to kind of just pass the time, just, you know, because it's easy to talk and chat while you're, while you're working on a puzzle. Um, uh, so that's another kind of neat feature that just comes right, right embedded with the game. Um, I think that might be a fairly, um, a, a good introduction. I mean, there's a lot to get into it. I think, I think just kind of exploring it on your own. Um, why don't you go ahead and show them, uh, uh, island just to show them the a, a different style that you've gotten us into in terms of cooperative game playing sure so for um so so what he's talking about there is is uh forbidden island is a cooperative game in that you're not playing against other people all everybody playing in the game is working together and you win or lose um together so this is a game where you you you're trying to rescue um, some treasure items from from an from an island uh, before the island floods and sinks under underwater. Uh, and and it, so, and, it, and and and, and a notice too what the background is for this wallpaper on this game. Yeah, so we got a nice three D three D photo of the of the ocean. <laughs> Again, for just you know, just a little bit of uh, 
of, of, of theatrical and environmental. So here we've got a, a good place to distribute, to, sorry, to demonstrate the alt command. So here we've got Forbidden Island. There's a card right here that's got the order of play and the actions that you can take. If I hover my hand over it and press alt, now that comes up large and I can actually read what's on that card. The same thing would apply to the instructions that's, that, that people have placed here. I can, um, oh, no, I can't. Those you just have to zoom in on. But here we can just pull that up. Uh, if I want to read the uh, what's on, see that card a little closer, see this card a little closer. Um, I would definitely recommend, if you haven't tried some cooperative games, I would definitely recommend Forbidden Island, uh, the whole Forbidden series, Forbidden Desert. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there, and it, and it really takes a new take. Um, you know, the hurt feelings are much less. Um, and I think particularly playing with younger players, um, you know, everybody's working together. And there's you're talking about it, and, it, and there's there's not the any kind of combative feeling, and it's a really fun. This game is really fun, you know, to see can you get can you get off the island? Can you um, can you work as a team to get off of there? I'll show you one more. Uh, Horrified is a really fantastic cooperative game based on the Universal Studios original monsters. Uh, and so you can see that you the game takes place in a village uh, and various monsters are on the loose. And you're working together to overcome the monsters and, and uh, you know, and, and protect the village. Uh, that's another game that I would highly recommend um, uh, checking out. Now, another resource for those of you who maybe don't play tabletop games a lot, there are a multitude of YouTube channels now that feature videos of people just playing the games and teaching you how to play. So there have been a couple of times where before we've engaged in playing the game through Tabletop Simulator, I've sent uh, my dad a YouTube link and said, hey, watch this video of these people explaining and then playing the games. And then you kind of, it, it's a little bit easier to see kind of people playing it before you jump in. So you don't need to be intimidated about, oh, how would I figure out this new game? With YouTube now, there's several channels um, uh, that, that go through the process of explaining how to, how to play and then them playing the game itself while sort of mentioning the different aspects of it um, as well. So tons of resources out there. Um, and lots of stuff available uh, through this. So Gary, I don't know. Uh, th this is Jerry, and uh, you've got a ton of different questions, and you're now at uh, 350 with 10 minutes left. So uh, you either take the questions or summarize, please. Uh, we could take some questions if you'd like. Can stream and tabletop simulator be played on an iPad or an Android tablet? I don't think so. Is it probably because you... Okay. Oh, Can the directions and rules for the game be accessed during the game play? Yes. So uh, right down here, you can see on my screen. So here's the horrified instruction book that's right here. And this one I can alt over and read. And if you can kind of see when I hover over to the right, there's a next page button. So we click on that. And that moves us to the next page. Okay. Click on uh, that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, another good question is during play, uh, do we... Uh, Communicate by text or voice? Uh, that's that you have got a couple options for that. There is, I believe the key command is C, and it will open up a voice chat within um, within tabletop simulator itself. Most of the time when I'm playing, we're actually running a Zoom call at the same time. So we're actually interacting over Zoom and then playing the game inside of here. So and you that, could use you could use Skype or any other Discord, any other kind of chat uh, group function that way. Yeah. The other the other reason for the uh, using Zoom is that you can switch back to the cameras and see each other, which gives another uh, heightened level of being together to play these games. 
Okay. Uh, if I buy a four pack, can I change the users, i.e., one weekend one couple and next weekend somebody else? I don't think so. I think the when you buy the four pack, you would uh, okay. you would gift that game through Steam, and it would be uh, matched to a specific user's account. Now, I I don't know if 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 like say you just had like you maybe just created four individual accounts and you shared that password, you could explore doing that. I can't say for certain that it would work, but in theory. I think if the person had downloaded Steam and was able to log in with that uh, with that account oh. name, but because the, the game would be attached to the account, right? To the yeah. Steam account. Yeah. So it's like being able to get to somebody else's email. You just log in with theirs, and you've got all their messages. Possibly. No. Yeah. Another question that came up, guys, is uh, is Scrabble available? Let's see. Games Workshop. Scrabble. Browse. Scrabble. Yes, it looks like go. we've got we've got a couple of choices there. Okay, like I say, uh, you've had plenty of questions, and we certainly don't have time to cover them all right now. But if people signed up using their correct name, so we can email the answers, we certainly will. Absolutely. How about some closing remarks, guys? Uh, I I think that um, particularly in the in the event of COVID, uh, this has been really important for me in terms of feeling uh, connected to people. Uh, you know, I'm in Las Vegas. My parents uh, are in Central Ohio. We've not seen each other in person in a couple of years at this point in time. Being able to interact this way is really special. Um, I also think that it's, it's, we live in a time where people are constantly doing things on their own, playing a game on their own iPhone, reading on their own phone, anything that kind of gets people sitting around a table, even if it's virtual and laughing and, uh, interacting, I think is incredibly healthy and, uh, something that, that, that we've kind of gotten away from in society. And I think that technology such as this is going to let us get it back a little bit. Fantastic. How about yeah. you, John? Closing remarks? Yep, yeah, closing remarks. Uh, remember, what needs to happen is that everybody goes to Steam and gets the Steam program. And then each player, not host, but each player has to have their own tabletop. So I have a tabletop and my wife has a tabletop because we sit at two different computers and my son and his wife sit at two different computers. And so we're all four playing together. So you each purchase your own tabletop. And like I said, you know, there's the deal right now for four. Then one of you has to be the host. And all that means is I set up the, the game and I control those, those buttons that Chris has that I don't have because I'm not a host. Uh, but everybody can be a host. You can be hosting a different one. It's just like right now, I'm the host of this Zoom, but on another, uh, on another track, Bill James is the host of track one. And Jerry might be having a meeting somewhere else as a host. Today, he's a co-host. Um, and I think that the opportunity to, to be together and do things like this is great especially all the free stuff. There was one other game on there that Christopher showed me. You can do Legos. Oh. My grandkids love Legos. So wow. that's under that's under the workshop tab as well. You just search for Lego and it uh, brings you up um, a table here and you've just got limit unlimited um, things that you can pull off. Got a car over here. Uh, so that's another way to interact. And then one more just fun feature that I'll show you. Um, Please. Not not to completely take out the 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 bad blood that can come from table <laughs> games. You can see up here at the top we've got a flip button. So if if somebody's just cheating and you can't stand it, you just you flip the table and uh, and nobody <laughs> has to nobody has to clean anything up. <laughs> So, you know, my thoughts at, at, at 10 bucks, uh, 
that's you know so much less than what you'd pay in the ability to be able to connect with people far far away and play some games uh, next week is going to be a good one in Ohio because we're forecast for four to eight inches coming up next week we're not going to go outside and do anywhere but we could get on the computer and play games yeah well let me remind everybody else that's been watching this and I have too and I've uh, I've been educated uh, that you know you send in the question, we're going to get around to answering them if, in fact, you logged in so that we can send an answer to you. And uh, John and Chris, uh, I really appreciate what you guys have done and put together. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks. Uh, Take that care of over. Yep, that's over. Um, I just to say that that uh, the chat box will be left over. Want to thank Christopher for joining me today and uh, helping get some maybe some of you excited about tabletop uh, simulator. Uh, I'll leave the chat box on for a little bit. So if you have some other questions, uh, our next VTC will be held on May 1st, 2021. And I'll remind people who are still here about all the workshops that we have. We have starting next week and for the next two months, except for one day, we have a workshop on every uh, Wednesday at 12 uh, noontime. You got something in your me email, go get registered and take part in that. Thanks, everybody. Jerry, thank you very much for being my co-host again. And uh, we'll talk with everyone later. Have a good weekend.